This is E2B, Energy to Business, a podcast by Opportune, where we bring you in-house expertise that serves all energy sectors. We examine emerging financial and technology trends and provide a broad perspective on ways to stay ahead, create opportunities, and execute market strategies. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of E2B, Energy to Business, an opportune podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Litwin, the voice of B2B. And folks, thanks so much for joining us on another episode of Opportune's show. We always appreciate you tuning in to our opportune thought leadership here and the various conversations we host, both with our internal partners as well as external third parties as we continue to explore major technologies, trends, and offer actionable strategies for the broader oil and gas and energy industries. So thanks again for listening in today. I want to make sure that you've got all of our previous content handy as you listen to today's episode. So make sure you're heading to our website, opportune.com. Again, that's opportune.com. For more information on our solutions and services, how we're partnering with and supporting various uh, key players in the larger uh, oil and gas and energy industries. And you can also find more content of ours there, including episodes of the show, but also videos, white papers, research, you name it. You can also subscribe to E2B on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Just hit that subscribe button and you'll have a full catalog of previous conversations plus notifications when we drop new episodes. So folks, let's dive in. For our episode today, we're going to be discussing the field of petroleum engineering and the important role that it plays when applied in the oil and gas industry. For a little context, a recent survey out of Texas Tech University found that the number of new petroleum grads, right, petroleum engineering graduates in the United States is expected to decline substantially from just five years ago. And this is despite strengthening oil and gas prices, high average salaries for these roles, and plenty of career opportunities in the industry. So why the disconnect, right? Is it a training challenge, a PR one? And what are some of the benefits of starting a career in petroleum engineering? Well, we're going to be breaking down this dynamic and hear some unique perspectives on the state of the petroleum engineering field, where it's headed, and how the industry should maneuver the current dynamics surrounding the field and uh, joining it both as a fresh entrant as well as a legacy employee. So let's introduce our guests. First up, we have Austin Ward. He's a consultant with Opportune's valuation practice. Austin, great to have you on. How are you doing? Hi, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure having you here, Austin. We're also joined today by David Edwards. He's a petroleum engineer with Ralph E. Davis Associates, an Opportune company. David, welcome to the episode. Great to have you as well. Pleasure to be here. And I'm excited to pull from your expertise uh, as a petroleum engineer for our conversation. And Austin, David, I know this is the first time for both of y'all on E2B. So welcome. Hope you have a great time. Thank you so much for joining us. And I know our audience is going to learn a lot from you. To get started with the conversation, Austin, I'll point the first bit of conversation your direction. I know that you also have a petroleum engineering degree, which is going to be great to pull from for our conversation today, Uh, but you also just recently joined Opportune as a consultant, right? So welcome to the team, first off, Uh, and let's begin by having you briefly describe your role with Opportune's valuation practice team, and also a little more context on your background and how being a petroleum engineer now feeds into your current role. Yeah, sure. Um, So I've been with Opportune for a little over two months now um, with their valuation advisory services practice. Um, One thing that drew me to Opportune was their focus on energy and particularly upstream oil and gas uh, projects. So, you know, coming from a petroleum engineering background, um, it's something that that I look forward to and and have really been enjoying so far. Thanks for that, Austin. Appreciate the context. David, we'll toss over to you now. You obviously are a petroleum engineer as well. You have a petroleum engineering role at Ralphie Davis. Uh, Can you tell the listeners a bit about your background as well, Uh, plus more info on your career journey up until your role at Ralph? Yeah, so it's a bit of my background. I started off uh, after I graduated in 2019 at a small operator in Dallas. Um, Originally went to OU for petroleum engineering. It was kind of just a decision that was culminating from a bunch of different interests that I had in math and sciences at the time. 
So when it came down to choosing a degree, I couldn't think of a, a world where I'd rather be other than uh, the oil and gas industry. So since uh, since graduating, I uh, just recently came over to Opportune from a company called Energy Advisors Group and where I did mostly A&D transactions. And I obviously helped out on the engineering side of that. David, thank you so much. Uh, always appreciate getting to dig a little bit into the perspectives that our guests are going to be bringing on the show. So it's time to get to the main conversation. This is what the audience has been waiting for, right? Uh, I want to start by analyzing where the petroleum engineering field is headed by sort of looking at what drew both of y'all into the field. Uh, so this question is for both of you, but we'll start with David here. Being a recent petroleum engineering graduate, David, what really, or I guess initially drew you to the petroleum engineering field and why? Yeah. So as I said, it was always math and sciences inclined. So that really leads your thinking uh, towards engineering just in general. So a main driver for my interest in petroleum in specific uh, was my father was an entrepreneur in Dallas and he had a lot of clients that were in the oil and gas industry. So being around them and hearing how they spoke about the oil and gas industry really rubbed off on me, uh, just learning sort of the inner workings of the industry um, and the purpose that it serves the greater good was inspiring for me. Um, in fact, it was also inspiring for my sister as she also went into petroleum engineering. Uh, so I guess we got bit by the bug. Um, so when it came down to decide on a degree, I couldn't figure out or didn't know of any other thing I'd rather do than go into the oil and gas industry. Austin, same question for you. Uh, what drew you to the petroleum engineering field at first? Yeah, honestly, um, parallel to David, had a big you know interest in, in strength in science and math growing up. And my dad was a civil engineer, so, you know, kind of had that um, influence early on, you know, to go into engineering. And um, one thing that drew me to petroleum in particular was, you know, just the industry itself. And, and like David said, all the good that it serves, you know, society and, and how, how far it's brought us. And it's really interesting um, field of study that I think differs from a lot of different um, engineering studies like mechanical, chemical, um, in that it's it's more targeted on one industry. So. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what, what drew me in. Yeah, I always think it's important for our audience to hear the real stories, right? The motivations and the uh, reasoning, the strategy that pulls people into very specific niche and skilled careers in our industry. So thanks for that context, both of you. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, let's bring that survey back up. There was a survey that came out from Texas Tech University that found that the number of new petroleum engineering graduates in the U.S. is expected to total about 400, which, you know, that's a sizable number, right? But that's about an 83% decline from 2017, which is sizable. At that time, the number of petroleum engineering graduates peaked at more than 2,300. So from 2,300 down to 400 in just a matter of five years is pretty stark. Uh, typically, there's been a strong correlation between class sizes and the um, preceding increases in oil and gas prices. But this is not the case today, right? So I think we need to get a better pulse for what's happening today. Uh, David, we'll start with you. What are some of the factors that you think are attributing to this decrease in petroleum engineering graduation rates, right? What's the why and how should we uh, decipher this trend? So it's still fresh on most people's minds, uh, the contraction that the oil and gas industry recently went through, through one of its worst periods of all time, uh, going through COVID. And when you're in school or you're looking to see or trying to figure out a career path that's good for you, hearing news stories of just hundreds of people that you may have known getting laid off in the oil and gas industry, it doesn't, very, doesn't sit well with a lot of people. Um, but this is, this is not unique to the oil and gas industry as we're seeing right now with the tech industry. When growth gets halted, you need less, less of a workforce to continue operations. So there's a bit of a contraction and a reduction in workforce that always comes with that. And then probably the other thing would be a negative sentiment just generally around fossil fuel industry. A lot of people, when they're deciding a degree, they uh, take what they hear at face value and don't look past that. And that can generally be good enough reason for someone not to continue to pursue that career path. Um, whereas when uh, or if they look, look, for, look into it a bit more, then 
uh, they might find that something that they uh, would really enjoy doing. Yeah, it's some really interesting dynamics at play, some predictable ones, but also some unpredictable ones. Austin, what about you? Same question, right? Uh, what do you think is really drawing the graduation rates down for petroleum engineers? Yeah, definitely. Um, just, I mean, those were the two main points that I had. But one thing to add to is there's always kind of like a, a lag, like one and a half, two year lag between you know, any big jump in oil price or, or an industry and, um, you know, the response in people enrolled in petroleum engineering, um, just because obviously it takes time to, to, you know, get into a program, stay in a program. Um, yeah, so so that's really all that I had to add to those those other two points. There's a high level trend here that I think is important to dissect. I'm curious how much of an impact both of y'all think the growth of renewable energy sources uh, and just renewables in general, um, their implementation and um, their prevalence now for both consumers as well as B2B professionals. Uh, again, do you think the growth of renewables in general is influencing the decision of young professionals, of of young persons, of soon to be graduates or even freshmen just entering, right? Kickstarting their uh, collegiate journey. Do you think it's influencing their decisions around considering a career in the petroleum engineering field? Yes, no. Why or why not? Austin, we'll start with you. Um, so for uh, David kind of touched on this earlier with the, with the impact that renewals, renewables have, you know, the, uh, the sentiment um, towards oil and gas right now, I, I'd say is, almost at like an all time low, um, especially for people looking to go into, you know, just starting their career, looking to go to a program and, and, uh, you know, go to school and, and dedicate that time and, and, you know, go down a path. It's, it's very targeted, but, um, you know, we've seen a lot of volatility in people studying petroleum engineering. It's, it's nothing new. Um, you know, there've been cycles before and, and so, you know, it, it's somewhere that we've been before. And I, I think that, um, you know, it, it'll it'll come back. I think just right now, the sentiment is is pretty negative um, to oil and gas from someone who may not know um, too much about the industry. Anything else to add on that one? Uh, further examples or context that either of y'all have gathered from your career? Yeah, to Austin's point about uh, people just having the negative sentiment about it, there's a lot of talk about the energy transition and ending the oil and gas industry basically as soon as possible. The truth is that there's going to be a need for new talent to roll through the industry for years to come. There's a lot of energy in this world that needs to be replaced by renewables or, or green tech, but there's still a lot of places and regions in the world that aren't, aren't even at the level that we're at with reliable clean or reliable energy. And that's still a lot of growth that needs to happen in the industry. Something to add to that, um, you know, natural gas is also kind of, you know, a pseudo clean fuel that obviously is associated with um, the oil and gas industry. So, you know, that's something that kind of fills the gap in um, production cycles of, of renewable energy, which you can't necessarily control as much. You can't control the wind. You can't control the when the sun's shining. So um, natural, you know, that's kind of predicted to continue um, continue serving uh, the same purpose that it, that it has. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I mean, it's, it's low carbon profile. It's definitely appealing and it's reliable and it's abundant as well, for sure. So uh, let's intersect some of the training uh, and, and the skills that are uh, laid down as a foundation when becoming a petroleum engineer and try to intersect that with the rest of the field. Um, what do you think makes a petroleum engineering career a unique one uh, among the larger engineering ecosystem or maybe even just more specifically compared to other engineering fields? And I'm curious if there are certain kinds of skills that you feel you could use outside of petroleum engineering that you picked up or that uh, you know you also could apply to petroleum engineering to excel in this field? I know it's kind of a layered question there, but David, we'll start with you. Yeah, so petroleum, I think, is more of a specialized degree than most other forms of engineering, uh, especially more than your mechanicals, your uh, chemicals that really just give you the general concepts of those. But 
as far as being a more specialized degree, the fundamentals that you learn while you're studying for petroleum are applicable across all engineering disciplines. So the degree, um, you know, won't, can't always overtly prepare you for exactly everything you're going to face in the industry. Uh, even if it's very specialized, it's such a broad industry, it's impossible to learn in four years. But colleges basically act to get you competent, uh, a competent baseline and the ability to learn. Uh, but it's up to you to continue to build your knowledge base. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, Austin, anything to add there? Yeah, so one thing that I know that UT um, has been really trying to do is, uh, and other programs as well, is you know build in a couple of different courses and, and other skills that might be applicable um, across different industries as well. Mainly, I mean, in any <clears throat> in any undergraduate program, you're going to have skills like statistics or uh, modeling that you apply in oil and gas, but obviously, obviously those skills can be applied elsewhere. Um, and I know that programs are, are, you know, making, making an effort to build those up um, and, and offer more core classes and electives for, for students. Great context, y'all. Thank you for that. Do you think then that some, if not all, of the petroleum engineering skills learned in school, uh, learned you know in a collegiate setting, and even acquired on the job are transferable to, say, working as an engineer in the wind or solar or renewables in general industries? Is it that easy to take one set of skills and apply them to a new burgeoning side of the industry? David, any perspective there? Sure. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the engineering skills that you learn under a petroleum degree are very applicable to other industries. I mean, uh, fluid mechanics, for one, is very applicable to everywhere because, you know, air is fluid, fluids are fluids. It's a lot, it's pretty easy to go in between the two and treat them all the same, uh, as well as other forms of energy like geothermal. It's extremely applicable to oil and gas because the oil and gas industry already has all the knowledge and the ability to drill wells as well as manage uh, underground pressures. So it's a, it's really a good fit for them in order to move into a different form of renewable energy. The same could also be said for underground storage for CCUS, uh, as well as other natural gas storage uh, applications for that. It's all very relevant to oil and gas. Hmm. Yeah, really interesting. Um, Austin, anything to piggyback on there? One thing that David kind of touched on earlier on the previous question, I think, is that unlike most other degrees in engineering that are, you know, more broad in in where they can be applied and petroleum engineering is more specific to one industry um within that industry there's so so many different sides you know like like david was talking about you learn thermodynamics you learn fluids you learn um mechanics you you know you learn a lot of different so aspects of engineering that you then apply so you kind of touch on a lot of different fields of study um in, in a very diverse set of of fields of study so uh, you know, those can be applied elsewhere. And, and I think that that's something that's that's pretty cool. So yeah, yeah. So just just add a little bit of color to what to what David said. Well, I'm curious how this larger sort of five year trend of both decreasing petroleum engineering graduates and also a surge in acceptance and uh, infrastructure and use of renewables, how this is impacting the actual schooling strategies, right? The curriculum strategies from educational institutions. Have either of you seen petroleum engineering schools maybe adjust their programs or their classes or even their curriculum in general in light of this energy transition? Have you seen uh, or have you had schools yourselves, right, uh, offer classes around renewables or sustainable energy courses, um, you know, to adapt to the changing times? If so, it'd be great to hear from y'all uh, some specific unique stories from your own education journeys. David, we'll start with you here first. Yeah, no, colleges have definitely been uh, making moves to stay relevant uh, for the next 100 years as they have been in the prior 100 years. I'm aware of my alma mater, OU. They're coming out with a new degree called Geoenergy Engineering, which I believe is a program that they've had previously, but at one point it became discontinued in favor of petroleum engineering. But this course, the way they're releasing it now, is going to encompass still petroleum engineering, I think, is the core. Uh, but it will also include some geothermal, some machine learning, CCUS, uh, other hydrogen classes, uh, and other programs that are seen to be as part of the energy transition. This is kind of already, in, a, in addition to a degree they've already had for some time now called natural gas engineering, which seems to be a degree focused on capturing 
the intermediary step of the energy transition, which will involve lots of natural gas. Um, they definitely say that petroleum is still going to be a degree that they they offer and is going to be a core competency for them. And they aim to be really good at uh, unconventional reservoirs is probably the main focus. But all these new degree plans that have been unveiled uh, aim to keep them around for the next hundred years and to what they're calling the energy in transition. Austin, same question for you. Uh, I know you went to UT Austin. Uh, you know, go Longhorns, right? <laughs> uh, any unique courses around renewables that you've seen upon, uh, you know, graduation there or during your time at the school? Anything that you've kept your pulse on that you've seen from them uh, on how they're adapting to the changing times? Yeah, at, at Texas, uh, I think they're, you know, they, they offer, I don't, I don't know per, per se if it's renewable specific or renewable focused courses, but there are some, you know, machine learning coursework. Um, there's there's a geoscience degree that kind of parallels a lot of what petroleum engineering does uh, in terms of coursework, um, and you know, so from UT. But I also know other schools are offering something called the an energy engineering program. Um, so that kind of covers, you know, not necessarily just petroleum, but renewables as well. So I, there are programs out there for sure that, you know, are, are bringing in um, studies in, in renewables. Yeah, and I, you know, I feel like that shift is almost inevitable, I would say, right? And I'm sure most professionals would agree. Um, but I, I guess to wrap up, while these stats from the Texas Tech University survey may sound bleak for the outlook of petroleum engineering, there are a lot of trends that are signaling the opposite, right? including macro trends surrounding the global flow and trade of oil and gas. Uh, in the short term, oil and gas will continue to be uh, the main uh, energy source for the entire world. Uh, so there will definitely still be an outsized need for uh, skilled engineering professionals in this space, even if there is also a growth in renewables. So I just want to ask both of you then, what advice would you give a wide-eyed freshman, right, who might be considering a major and a career in petroleum engineering today with all of this content and all of this context in mind? Where should we guide them? What advice would you give them with so much unpredictability in the industry today? Austin, let's start with you here. I think really the best thing is, you know, go reach out to people that you may know or in the industry and, and get their firsthand experience, um, what they do, you know, what they like about their job, that sort of thing, um, where they fit into the whole industry and kind of get like a, a perspective that way. And another thing is, you know, you could read articles um, from different, I know JPT is a pretty journal for petroleum technology is a pretty good one um, that covers, you know, all types of stuff in the industry. So um, yeah, just, just really get out there and, and, be curious um, and, and see if it's something that you could see yourself doing. And David, we'll open it up to you for final thoughts. Same question. Yeah, I would, I would echo what Austin was saying. Um, basically, it's great to develop a good opinion uh, about what the actual responsibilities of going into petroleum engineering would be and what that all entails. Um, it's, it's kind of piggybacking off uh, what Austin's comment of going around and asking people in industry what their opinion would be. It's also wouldn't really hurt your freshman year in college to just give it a try because freshman year is basically the fundamental calculus physics classes that are applicable uh, and transfer for all engineering majors. So giving petroleum a go your freshman year, then going to career fair and trying to find an internship where you could really get good experience either in the field or in the office is probably one of the best ways to um, teach you a lot as well as uh, help you realize if it's something that you actually want to pursue. You know, I think there's no more valuable advice than uh, advice fueled by expertise and experience. And so I appreciate both of y'all sharing and pulling from your own time in the field to help guide the next generation here, right? And just as a reminder, you know, that while the oil and gas industry may get a bad rap, um, petroleum engineering and the STEM field that intertwines with it is honestly only going to be growing and is still going to be a needed component in the workforce in the future, uh, regardless of the industry that it ends up being applied to. Uh, so engineering in general, even if it isn't petroleum engineering, still needs support and still needs some strategic advice and motivation for uh, you know, 
fresh professionals to consider a career in these fields and gather those needed skills. Uh, you know, again, the opportunities to secure an engineering career in the oil and gas industry are bountiful. Uh, and it's really just all about seizing those opportunities. Well, on that note, I think we'll go ahead and wrap up this episode of the podcast. Thank you so much to the two of you for your time and for your first time participation and your great insights. I know it's valuable for our audience to hear from uh, professionals that are staking their flag in the side of the industry and building a career for themselves. So thank you again to the two of you. It's been a real pleasure. And again, we've been chatting with Austin Ward, consultant with Opportunes Valuation Practice. And we've been chatting with David Edwards, a petroleum engineer with Ralph E. Davis Associates, an Opportune company. Austin, David, thanks again for your time. And thank you everyone for listening to today's episode of E2B, Energy to Business, an Opportune podcast. If you like what you heard today and you want previous episodes or you want some other Opportune content, including more detailed research on the topic that we just broke down today, you can head to opportune.com for all of that and more. You can also subscribe to E2B on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. I'm your host, Daniel Litwin, the voice of B2B, and we'll catch you on the next episode of E2B.